welcome one more my name is Tavis and today we are going to have a look at a cat a big cat that big cat this is a filament 3d printed model from uh, Gambody that I have had sitting on a shelf for years waiting to be painted and I didn't want to do it because basically painting this with a brush would take the better part of a week so instead I decided to take out my newfound airbrush and airbrush it because you know it's somewhat faster and um, that didn't go up particularly well uh, first we had a clog and a stuck and the airbrush just didn't want to work at all so you know a quick service later it now has an overflow issue instead but at least at least better than no e flow so yeah it was a good start anyway this is a catapult for those not know don't know it and it's based roughly on the design found in mcmurray online and um, we're basically going to give it simple sort of woodland camo based in green gray not gray brown green brown and a sort of tan which uh, turned out looking more white because, well, life is what it is. Now, once we have the spraying issues fixed and things actually started to lay, lay down the way they should possibly lay down, maybe it's just a simple base of green because it is the easiest color. It's a sort of mid of the three ones. It's not the brightest, not the darkest, it's the mid one. So it's the easiest one to start with because you just put the rest on as is. We also had a terrible issue running out of paint. As you can see, um, I haven't really figured out the right way of managing this airbrush yet. It, it, it's a bit uneven. But it is at least faster than doing it with a brush, so that is what it is. I'm still learning. I'm not particularly good at airbrushing, I'm not particularly good at camo yet, so we, we, we're, we're still working on it. Trust me, this bit of footage makes it look a lot better than it did while I was doing it. Believe it or not. So yeah, basically these mechs are done on a FDM printer, a filament printer. As opposed to resin printer. You could do more resin printer too, but you just use up a lot of a lot of resin. We don't do that. Especially on my little Mars, it's way too small of a build plate. If you have a Saturn or something bigger, like, you could probably do it with one of these large plate printers. But again, it would use a lot of resin. As you can see again here, we are having flow issues. There is barely any paint coming out and well, we don't know how to solve that. There's, there is still a lot of experimenting going on with this. And um, yep, yeah. all of a sudden, problem solved. I think it's a paint mixing, mixing issue I have. I'm not good enough at painting, painting mixes yet, mixing paints yet. But you know, we are learning. The idea is that you put down a base coat maybe of a green or something else, and then you either mask off, or if you are adventurous, freehand paint on the camera on top of that. And um, yeah, for those who are curious, we are currently using um, cultist robe, I think it's called. But any green, any warm green works for this. You can use a cold green if you want to. Maybe you can use any green. It's kind of fun though, airbrushing. I have to say that it is kind of fun. But yeah, for all intents and purposes. We now have a green mech. So 
So next episode is a tan. This is Banshee Brown, I think. No, nope, it's Skeleton Bone, my other favorite tan color. And I'm just gonna slap this on because I have no idea what I'm doing. You see, smart people will research first how to paint camo, but me, I was like, no, we're gonna do this a Jazza style. We're just gonna jump right in and try. Probably gonna hit this with some inks later on just to bring up some of the whiteness because it's very white. But, I mean, we are still just trying things out. If you have some ideas, feel free to post them. But yeah, the idea is to basically just put down some fields of light color to create the illusion of light. I'm not entirely sure if that actually works on a 12 meters tall walking tank, but hmm, who am I to? Who am I to say it doesn't work? So, next up is a brown. I think it's oak brown. And uh, we're doing the same thing, just putting it down in large chunks and hoping for the best. We kind of over diluted this paint, but it still worked out anyway because it's brown. Got as well, yeah. I actually think it turned out pretty good in the end. Not great, but pretty good. Eh, for I me, mean, first time tried our brushing camo, that is. Probably not going to try something smaller than this, though. So, next up, of course, we're back to a more traditional thing way of doing things with the brush, because we are not going to airbrush metallics. Not only do you never ever get them out of the airbrush again, because there are micro flakes in there, they also they, are, as I understand, it's fairly abrasive, so you shouldn't do that anyway. They are specially designed airbrush metallics, and I'm, I'm sure you could, in theory, airbrush these too, but we want a bit more control, so yeah. No airbrushing of the metallics. We just paint a few details and, um, for example, these hangers and uh, the feet and everything. And I was not really familiar with the size of this one. It made some odd things happen. I put my hand away of things. And of course, as always, we paint the weapon silver. I mean, it's a lot easier to understand what's a weapon on this one because it's one of the big pods. This one is also missing some weapons. It's supposed to plug in on the front with the holes you can see there. They're supposed to slot in a laser there, but I didn't print it. I tried to print it once, it failed, and I could just never be asked to print it again. Because those are supposed to be also supposed to be some flaps covering the missile pods, but those definitely didn't print. So again. We are running a bit of a outrider version here. Weight reducted version. But yeah. It's a lot easier to paint missile based on this size of me. Because you just have so much space to work with. But yeah, lay down a nice silver paint. And... Um, I also painted the uh, ladders on the side of the cockpit with some metallic touches to get that to be worn down. It was hard to see, so I didn't bother to show that. And then, of course, painting all the missiles red because why not? I mean, I would kind of think they would be slightly round, sharper, pointier than not so round, but you know, it is what it is. Again. I usually hate painting missiles, but on this one it's just fairly fun. Normally I said there's a very, very tiny area. Also, what's point out the red news right now is very wet. It's a very moist red because we're sitting on my, my wet palette for a few days, accumulating water. 
So it, it's very soppy. Works well for this, but it, uh, I wouldn't recommend painting in larger areas with it. Because, well, it wouldn't end well. Mm. Yep, not much more to say about that. Missile is painted. And of course, we repeat this step on the other side. Now, for the cockpit window, so I decided to go with the McWarrior style here too, because, well, this one is sort of a McWarrior, McWarrior Online mech, so, and they always have these metallic, bronzy, golden plates on the windows. Because I would assume that it's easier on the computer. <laughs> so yeah, I start off with a um, dark bronze, brass, not brass, bronze, I think it's bronze, very dark. I'm not doing bronze, it's dark, uh, dark iron, the rust, most rusty color. I then put on a few globs of really wet gold paint. And uh, the idea is going to use that to blend. It didn't really work out as intended, but we. The idea was to blend this up with some slightly similar tones mixed from the reddish iron and the gold. Doing a sort of wet blend technique, but it, it, it was too much gold. It flowed everywhere. And it happens. Sometimes things do not go the way you think they were supposed to go. You just roll with it. But you can actually see the uh, paint scratches, so to say, on the ladder um, going up the side of the mech. I don't know if you're able to figure out what exactly every part of the mech is, but yeah. So we will do a basic, simple blend and leave it at that. Because, I mean, it is what it is. I think we're going to wrap this up with painting some simple, good old Nolan oil while we see can onto the missile base because because these are supposed to be missiles shooting out there, so they're, they're going to be darker. Sort of, yeah, scorched. And I mean, at this point, we're pretty much done. I'm also going to do the feet and. Uh, then it's pretty much done for. And uh, until next time, stay safe, be kind, and do, do play fair. Bye.